Infinite truth, the formless truth, the attributeless truth cannot be thought about. Swami, for so many years, that's what we are doing. It cannot be thought about. You can think about something which has some quality, some attribute, some form. But if it is formless and attributeless, how you are going to think about it? You say, oh, it is attributeless. Then attribute becomes uh, a point of concentration. It is formless. So is formless something that which you can uh, grasp by your mind, by your senses? No, you can't. Correct? Clear to clear? You cannot live in space. If you build a room around in space, then you can live in the space. Isn't it? But you can't say, space. there are great Mahatmas say, space is my home, that is my roof, space is my roof. They don't live in inside a house or a hut or anything, they live outside. But those are rare ones. <laughs> if you can get scared in a room, what will happen if you get <laughs> go out in the space, in the jungle or in the desert or in the, uh, where nobody is there? Hmm? <clears throat> then how do we get, even though the truth is formless, attributeless, how do we get to it? Because this is the only faculty we have. We have this body, we have these senses, we have this mind, we have this intellect. And at this moment, we are the individual and we want to meditate on that formless reality. And we have studied enough Vedanta to know that essentially we are the formless. Essentially. But it stays far away from us. It as if it's at a distant uh, away from us for us to reach there. Because so many challenges are there in between of you can say various chakras or various uh, uh, memories or so many desires and expectations of the future, all these act as impediments in us being that infinite one. Correct? Now what are you going to do about it? Are you going to commit suicide? No, I'm not the body. You can't. <laughs> so what do we do? So we use the same senses, we use the same mind, we use the same intellect, this who uses this individual and what is he going to do instead of thinking about nothingness because nothingness is not a thing, that formless is, uh, how will you contemplate on it? One, one place we say 
in so many scriptures we say the truth is satchidananda swarup truth is nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarup and you come to amrit or mahav uh, don't abuse the truth <laughs> by saying it is satchidananda then what is sat sat is only word used to cancel asat chit is only used to cancel achit anand is used only to cancel dukham then what is the truth uh, you are and that's it so when you have neutralized all opposite forces asat achit nitya anitya anitya uh, nitya shuddha shuddha ashuddha nitya shuddha buddha buddha abuddha mukta amukta and in this way all these uh, uh, the 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 opposites of these words which we attribute to the lord that he has lord or the truth that he has these qualities nyaneshwar maharaj says all these are even the good words are abuses to the divine so don't use them because if you really look at it and see when we are talking we have to use it but when you are in meditation when you are in contemplation when you look at it from the truth's point of view and you can do that when only when you accept you are the truth only when you accept you are the source you are the essence from looking at it from that point of view like you have done it you get into you are sitting here and uh, if uh, she was uh, whatever you had you you got afraid at night for example in the in the in the building now i can say <laughs> silly fellows or i can take that position of theirs and try to understand what what went wrong there just like i say that i can see all the people and there is a wall behind with cupboards and i can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight lights here and i can see the outside and you just discard my conclusion of life you say you are talking all bs because we can't see eight lights we can't see uh, the cupboards we can't see the outside we can see only the wall maybe if we go a little bit on this side and that side we can see some outside i'll say oh i can see the church you'll say i see buffalos <laughs> huh? totally opposite so does it mean that we are not in the same room just because we are having different uh, viewpoints see so these view different viewpoints become valid where there is duality where there is unity of experience their duality the opposite viewpoints contrary viewpoints have got no validity the ability not even ability here i am not trying to get into your head and look at the world <laughs> but i just appreciate that it is possible to look at it differently isn't it if a child is crying and you just what happened oh that aunt came and bit me and you that i will see i made her run away and then he becomes happy even if there was no ant you didn't see it you are just making the drama and he becomes happy ah, mummy did she took care of me <laughs> this is another mother durga mata so we because we have a mind we have not learned how to not have a mind because we have senses we have not learned how to have no senses we have not learned how to live without senses without mind without intellect do you have that experience sleep. have you ever had deep sleep. deep sleep deep sleep is again deep sleep what we are having is the experience of the intellect because intellect goes into unmanifestation okay so frankly whenever all data goes away from our mind and senses we don't know how to remain awake <laughs> we start snoring and 
some of us uh, they don't even stop uh, start snoring they go into the sleep and instead of sleeping they start dreaming they create another world there or it gets created and the drama that was going on in the world it continues there even though we say that the dream is nothing but expulsion of unfinished activities or impressions on your mind now rather than a dream take you for a ride rather than uh, absence of everything bring fear into your mind rather than uh, forcing your senses and mind to cooperate with you in order to go into meditation this is what is shama uh, dama this is what is pranayam pratyahar you are forcing through you are employing will power by doing pranayam shama dama i am not going to see good we must do that don't don't take, take me wrong that we that i will allow i will go wherever my eyes go <laughs> then forget it we'll talk about that afterwards when mahishasur comes then we'll talk about him <laughs> so we must do that but instead of if we know our mind is there then if i have to dream why must i dream about the world why must i dream about my children why must i dream about un unfavorable events why can't i dream why can't i dream about the god the reason we are getting dreams about the world is only because we have not prayed to this divine mother with love with bhav yesterday we were talking about bhav we have put only once once you have to do it collect all your energies and offer it at her feet genuinely not superficially and then she will start coming what she will do she will also kill plunder <laughs> it will be more terrible dream no maybe maybe if it is if that is required that will happen if not i was just telling some of them that if you have to imagine the lord or goddess mother then you imagine she is walking and she is holding your hand you are holding her hand and she is or she is holding your hand and you are walking uh she is keeping you on her lap and caressing you like her own child that she is feeding you that she is uh, don't imagine you are sitting in her lap and she's got a bottle of milk and giving you that will be over imagination <laughs> that she is feeding you that she is taking care of you and the look in her eyes the the slight breeze is going on and her hair is you know just blowing and it comes on your on your on you so all this when you start imagining your mind starts getting bliss or experiences bliss which is more than you can ever imagine from anything or anyone in this world see and to do this here he says om khadgam chakra kadeshu chap parigraha shulam bhushundim siraha shankam samadhitam karai trinayanam sarvanga bhushavrutam नील श्याम द्युते संस्कृति है ना हाँ दिस वर्स इज देयर समवेयर इंग्लिश इज डिफिकल्ट टू रीड यू डोंट हैव टू रीड इट डोंट वरी यू डोंट हैव टू रीड इट जस्ट लिसन ओम खड्गम चक्र गेशु चाप परिधा 
शूलम भुषुंडीं शिर शंखम संदती कर स्त्री नयना सर्वांगभूषावृता नीलाश्मुतिमा से पादशका सेवे महाकालिका यामस्तौत्सव स्वपिते हरौ कमलजो हंतु मधुकैटभम हंतु मधुकैटभम सो यर इज सेज दिस इज हाउ यू इमेजिन द गॉड इज so one one day at we i told you here she is talking about the the, the dhyan shloka talks about killing two rakshasas uh, we will we, we are not going to kill anyone we are not going to hold any swords we are only seeing that madhukaita var some uh, what do you call negativities within us they represent all the negativities within us shortcomings within us we are just offering at her feet let her do what she wants so <clears throat> keeping your back neck and head in a straight line sit with a happy disposition feet flat on the ground hands interlocked on your lap not not someone else's lap and having the bhav that i take refuge at the at the feet of the three eyed one trinaya naam the three eyed shri mahakali or durga ji durga mata and who is she she is sitting on a lion she is having 10 hands with the various weapons of destruction destroy destruction dist, for destruction of what for the destruction of all the negativities unwanted desires unwanted fears all the shortcomings fears negativities individualized crystallized form that is also a negativity so she with those with those astra shastra with those weapons she destroys all these and what is what is that which she is holding in her 10 hands she is holding the sword the the discus the, the chakra the mace the gada the arrow the bow the club the spear the missile the human missile is the javelin the uh, then the human head and conch <laughs> so that human head is not of somebody else's it is your head that is the head of the individuality until unless the head of this ego is not cut till then you will not grow into the realization that you are the source behind all the heads you are the life behind all the heads om sahasra shirsha purusha sahasraksha sahasra pad to get this vision we chant this uh, purusha suktam yar kali mata aur durga mata she is representing pick as a picture as a form that what is required and that is the destruction of the ego and whose limbs are rich with ornaments she is wearing the red sari she is having the 
the, the so many malas around her neck she has got the arm band she has got the wrist bands she has got the nupur she has got the toe rings she's she's got the bindi she's got the crown chudamani she's got the ear rings and every uh, every now and then the the hair of hers just falls over the ears and then again gets blown back because of the slight breeze that is there the folds on her sari they keep changing her eyes are blinking she's got a most wondrous smile looking at you and in this manner and her skin color is blue black and this is kali our durga mata and whom the lotus born brahma extolled in order to raise shri vishnu from his mystic sleep and destroy the demons madhu and katava brahma ji is what when we take it subjectively brahma ji is the four heads of brahma ji are nothing but mana buddhi chitta ahankar right now what is happening is our mind is thinking about something the memories are about something our buddhi is convinced about something or the other and ahankara is on his own trip total disintegration within this disintegration is you at this moment but in the essence who are you either you are the absolute or you are the total problems are all for the individual for the total there are no problems it has the capacity to handle the total when that total is invoked with love surrender reverence the total is invoked by the asuras also but not with love reverence etc it is invoked to get something out of this world watch your mind when you go to a temple what do you ask the lord is it moksha or is it let my grandchild be good let my children be successful let my uh, whatever that means we are still stuck we have never made a genuine prayer prayer to the to the divine for liberation we still want that which cannot be held that which cannot be gained and what is that the world and we are not never wanting that which we can never live and what is that divine so see this lion on which this durga mata is sitting roaring away with all his teeth and fangs the main blowing the mother sitting on it with one leg folded under her one leg hanging down with all the ten arms with all these various weapons including the head and she is looking very lovingly at you she is not angry with you let her be angry with the demons 
with you she is pleased she is beckoning you come caress the lion but you can only see the feet which is hanging down you want to go hold it and touch it and get the blessings watch yourself move in the direction of her feet and as you touch the feet that very moment you find yourself transported in a lap a divine fragrance is experienced by you which puts you into another level of bliss you can't imagine that you are in the lap of your mother divine mother you feel completely at peace free from all fears free of all imaginations just like a small child whenever he gets afraid he goes and sits in the lap of the mother and for him that lap is the most safest place he becomes unconcerned about everything this we have learned from our childhood but somewhere as we grew up we forgot sit in the lap of mother let her take care of your journey let her take care of your shortcomings let her take care of all the demons that are within let her take care of all your desires to be fulfilled or not fulfilled let her take care of all the fears because she is capable because she is compassionate that is her nature all we have to do in order for her to be invoked and to get her attention is think about her that's all just like you all are sitting here if i need someone's attention i'll call them out and they will open their eyes and they'll look at me others will not because i didn't call them out so if we want the mother's attention then we have to call her out ya devi sarva bhuteshu matra rupena sanstita नमस्तस्य 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 नमो नमः कॉल अर आउट and be very free have complete faith and trust that she will take you to the truth because she is the truth 
she is not other than the truth she knows that even though her nature is that of changing trigunatmika but she'll help you to come to the unchanging principle because that is her essence also and she knows it we don't know it her guidance holding her finger or she holding our finger guides us to the truth not only the eyes should be able to see the goddess in our mind the mind is also oriented towards the goddess the memories are also about the goddess the buddhi is also convinced about the goddess the ego ahankar he is also wanting to merge into the goddess when all our faculties are in unison suddenly synchronized towards the divine mother then her grace her benevolent grace starts flowing in our life then the picture in our mind becomes clearer and clearer
get off your breaths of your body move your toes move your fingers slowly become conscious of the body offering everything at the feet of the divine goddess divine mother Continue sitting, you are more than welcome.